First of all, I want to say thank you to everybody who came to the drive-in church yesterday. I know it felt more like the middle of autumn, uh, rain coming at 45 degrees at times, but um, I believe it was certainly well worth the effort. Uh, we thank Stuart for sharing uh, his testimony with us. This, of course, is, uh, as I said, uh, in yesterday morning service. Um, this really is the last week of teaching of Morning Manna. Thank you for all your help, support and encouragements really throughout all of this time now. I will monitor it uh, whenever I get back from holidays. Next week, God willing, will be Testimony Week, so Morning Manna will be on next week, but it will be the Testimony Week. We look forward uh, to the different ones who will be sharing their testimonies uh, through that. But really, the, this morning, we continue this series, Busy Bees, looking at the, uh, the bee phrases, really, of Scripture. As a busy bee, what God um, wants us is that we be people who take these things that he commands us to be, exhorts us to be, and that we be busy in our lives seeking to uh, put them into practice. And that's really where uh, I've got the phrase from busy bees. And this morning, really, as we come to our second busy bee, we're looking at First Peter chapter 1 and verses 14 and 15. And um, we're living in a day uh, where we know that, especially amongst young people in particular, and, 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 and amongst girls in particular, although it is to be found amongst boys as well, there's a mindset that they, they need to be like the stars of Hollywood. They need to be like the stars of showbiz. Um, their photos, we know these people, these famous people, uh, they're splashed all over the magazines and websites and Instagram and Facebook. And, and as young people in particular look at these, they think to themselves that this is what they need to look like on the outside. When I was younger, when I was a teenager, many years ago, you'll never guess who I wanted to look like. I wanted to look like the cricketer, Ian Botham. Now, back in those days, he was at the height of his game he had uh, blonde highlights in his hair. Well, um, the home I grew up in, that was that was a no-no completely. And the other thing was he, he had his hair sort of growing down a bit at the back. And uh, I can remember thinking to myself, I, that's the way I wanted to be. Because I loved playing cricket and I wanted to look like him. And I hoped I could be able to play like him as well. But every time my dad took me to the barbers, there was absolutely no chance of my hair being allowed to grow any length at all. And sometimes what we see actually is young boys and, and teenage boys having a particular hairstyle. And, and most often when you see that particular hairstyle, there's a, there's a good chance that they're trying to be like some famous personality or sports person. When it comes to the stars of Hollywood and showbiz and entertainment, what people often don't see is the amount of photo editing that is done to photos to make these people look as perfect as possible or editing that is done to films so that certain footage is never shown on television because they want the, 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 the stars presented in a particular way. What people don't see also is the thousands of pounds um, that are spent by these people to get them looking younger and looking thinner. We think of the, uh, the, the, the surgery or the surgeries that many of them go through uh, just to get their, uh, their face reorganized. The professional people, we, uh, we think as well that they, they have these on board. And so many people don't see this, the professional hairstylists, the professional beauticians, all these people who are working continually to try and make them look picture perfect. Not one of these stars generally do you ever see without their, their makeup on, especially the females. You see, sadly, today's world is all about how we look on the outside. This reminds me of 1 Samuel 16. It's not our busy bee for this week or for today. But 1 Samuel 16 and verse 7, it says, But the Lord said unto Samuel, Look not, this is with regards to uh, David being called as king, Look not on his countenance. Remember the brothers, the seven brothers, had all been brought before Samuel by Jesse uh, before they even, even thought of David. Look not on his countenance or on the height of his stature, because I have refused him. For the Lord seeth not as man seeth. For man looketh on the outward appearance, but the Lord looketh on the heart. For us who are saved, it's not the outward appearance that God 
is concerned about. God is most concerned about our character. What we are like on the inside. What our lives are like when it comes to character, to integrity. You see, what we see is the world running around as busy bees to look the best on the outside. But I believe that what God wants us to do is to be a people who are running around in life seeking to be as holy as we can be on the inside. You see, that's our that's our busy bee for today. First uh, Peter 1 and verses 14 to 16, as obedient children, not fashioning yourselves according to the former lusts of your ignorance, but as he which co- hath called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation, because it is written, be ye holy, for I am holy. Those words taken from the Old Testament. The word conversation that is used here in verse 15 is simply, uh, or is properly rendered conduct. But as he which hath called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conduct, because it is written, be ye holy, for I am holy. And these words are something that is very, very clear. It's not the people of the world that we're to be looking at. To see what we ought to be like. It's God himself. That we are to be looking at. That's what it says here. Be ye holy. God gives that instruction. Why? He goes on to say. For I. Am holy. We're following. A holy God. A holy God who cannot look. On iniquity. A holy God who asks us to be holy in all of our ways. Our desire in life, our drive, our passion, it it ought to be like him. It's to be be holy as he is holy. It's to be pure. It's to be spotless. It's to be faultless. And this we can be. Why? Because we're partakers of the divine nature. Second Peter 1 and verse 4. We have the Holy Spirit living within us. To give us the help that we need. So that we can be holy. Being holy. Is not impossible. If it was well. God wouldn't instruct us to be holy. Yes we will never be as holy as God. But it shouldn't stop us from being busy each day. Endeavouring to be holy. As he is holy. Here's a question I just want to finish with today. In the Christian life. Which of the following two choices. Are we most concerned about. Being holy. Or being happy. Being holy or being happy. Because so much today is talk about uh, we want to be happy. We want to be happy all the time. And, And I know that God wants us to be happy. But the interesting thing in the word of God is this, is that never once are we exhorted or we commanded to be happy. But we're commanded to be holy. And what I've learned in life, if I've learned anything at all, it is this. Being holy. So often results in being happy. Being holy. So often results in being happy. The word of God says yes blessed are ye. Happy are ye. But even in the midst of all of that he's talking about even in the midst of persecution. But in persecution. We can experience blessing happiness. Believe we'll experience it first and foremost because of holiness. God wants us to be holy. Is that our desire today? Is that we're going to be busy about today? Our busy be seeking to be holy. Why? Because he is holy. And he commands us to be holy. God bless.